Tonight on Let's Talk About Health, we ask the question, how much sweat is too much? Also, does sweating too much cause body odor? And we're also going to find some solutions on how to deal with sweat and body odor as well. All this and more on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, About Health. Health. Good evening, everyone. So, Mike, I have to ask you, in this sweltering heat, it's been very, very hot here in Singapore, do you sweat a lot? I mean, I am from California, so we never sweat over there, ever. Really? <laughs> it's perfect weather. No, you never sweat. Yeah. But uh, I kid. Here, yeah, I sweat, especially if I'm, uh, if I'm doing, if I'm golfing, there's going to yeah. be a ton of sweating. Yeah. So, I think we are normal sweaters, what yeah. we would you know, categorize. Well, we consider yeah. normal sweaters, you and I. Yeah, so we wouldn't understand our next guest because he is known to sweat buckets. Please welcome Paul Foster. As well as Udaya Sandari and also Dr. Lo. Hello. Hello. Hi, Dr. Lowe. Hi, Lo. how are you? Hi, Hi good. Dr. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I of was, all the things you want to be known for. That's it. I yes. know, right? It's a lot of pressure. I was trying not to sweat back then. Come on, yeah, be sweating. So. Yeah, I can imagine so. <laughs> Have you guys ever found yourself in a situation where, you know, you start sweating when you really hope or wish that you didn't? All the time. I mean, yeah, all the time, right? I mean, sometimes you come out of the shower and you're trying to get some makeup on after putting your sunscreen and everything. Yeah. And then your upper lip and your cheek and everything starts perspiring. It's yeah. just Girl, a bit I too understand. much. Like, totally where's the understand. air conditioner? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. So, Dr. Lo, uh, I guess from a professional's point of view, what does it mean when you are sweating too much? I think sweating too much is... Um, a huge range. We live in Singapore, so everybody sweats a bit. But I think when you're not exerting yourself, you're not exercising, and you're still sweating, then it will raise some red flags, and that's what we call hyperhidrosis. Mm. And uh, Paul, with your sweating, is it like hyperhidrosis, or? I mean, uh, just a sweating a lot. Yeah, I, I am an excessive sweater. There's, there's no, <laughs> no two ways no about again. that. Come out of the shower, I'm sweating. Sitting at home, if, if I don't have the aircon on, sweating. Even getting my makeup before this, here? I was it's already freezing like, in yeah, here. I was already sweating, and the, the makeup artist is like, wow, I'm, I, I'm perfect for <laughs> this for episode. This <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy, but you know, sweating is not a bad thing. No, no. actually, sweating is very essential for our daily life because, mm. you know, it helps with thermal regulation, mm. and sweat actually helps to flush out toxins from your skin, moisturize your skin, and without sweating, you won't be able to cool down. So, sweat's very important for you. How exactly is sweat produced? So, sweat is produced by our sweat glands, but it is slightly more complicated than that. It starts from the temperature control centre in our brain called the hypothalamus, which then sends a signal to your sweat glands. Right. So then the sweat glands are very smart. They actually have sodium and chloride that goes into the tubules. These tubules will become high in salt concentration and water will then go into the sweat glands in what we call an osmotic gradient. And then the water will build up and then it comes out through the surface of the skin. And that's what happens in our acrine sweat gland. So is there like, can you measure mm. sweat? And of course, it depends on the activity you do. You know, marathon runners have been known to sweat a lot. Yeah. But typically, my patients don't measure. They just come to the clinic because they find that it's impacting their normal life. Like, you know, sweat patches on the armpits, mm. not able to grasp the doorknob. Simple things like that. Wow. Paul, did you ever think this seems medical? Did you ever have that thought? It's a good question. Um, I don't think I ever thought whether it's not right. Mm. And I never thought of it as a major problem, more as an annoyance. Issue, yes. Ever thought of fixing it? No, until I was offered this ah. opportunity. <laughs> yeah, so hyperhidrosis is a condition when you sweat too much, even when you're not exerting yourself. There are, of course, many types of hyperhidrosis, divided mainly into primary. Primary just means you don't really know why. There's no underlying medical cause, mm. like Paul. He mm. just has it. He's obviously healthy. And secondary, usually there's an underlying condition. It can be anything hormonal, like uh, diabetes, menopause. It can even be uh, a sign of tumour, mm. cancer. So mm. secondary is when you will have to treat the condition and then the condition will resolve. Is it ever genetic? 
hyperhidrosis can be genetic, yeah. So sometimes it does run in families. Uh, I believe there is a checklist. Yes, there yeah, is a to checklist. sort of decide oh. whether you have mm. hyperhidrosis. Yes. And we've got some sweat oh, thank you. Okay. droplets here. Okay. okay. And we're okay. all going to decide whether we have hyperhidrosis. That'd be interesting. Okay. okay. The first one. You sweat even when you're not exercising or moving. When I'm nervous, does that yeah, count? Yeah, you're not, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. no, I don't think okay. I, I no, do no. that. Okay. No. You try to avoid raising your arms around people because you're self-conscious about sweating. Not about sweating, but generally I, just try not to raise my arms around people. When I'm nervous. <laughs> They're all nervous. I don't think so. You don't, you, you you don't raise your arms. Oh. The third one. You sweat mostly from one or two areas of your body. For example, your underarms, your palms. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> while the rest of your body remains dry. For example, um, common areas like your underarms, your okay. palms, yeah. your feet, yeah, some people, I would, I would chest, so. head. Okay. You find it hard to turn a doorknob or things slip from your hands easily due to wetness. No. No? no? That doesn't happen. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that excessive. <laughs> okay. Your skin stays wet for long and it might peel or you get some occurrences of brushes on areas where you sweat. No? I got rash right here. Is that I double? Because you've got two. I think, you do Mike, a lot. I think Mike should go for this treatment. Yeah. <laughs> you're I got one yeah, yeah, and wet. he's got yeah. four. You're very well. I thought <laughs> I was going to win this game. So that is the checklist. Yes. So basically, if we have three or more, or four or more, yeah, ones, more though. likely to have hyperhidrosis. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. I'm surprised Mike, Paul is out you, Yeah, you, you need to book in. Why is hyperhidrosis yeah. in need of like just two areas? Two or more. Yeah, two or more. Oh, two or more. Stick it on. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely two or more. I thought, I thought, okay. Yeah. Right, right. Hyperhidrosis, the same thing as night sweats. Night sweats is a form of hyperhidrosis. So it is sweating in situations where you don't expect to sweat. So as I said, in secondary hyperhidrosis, menopause is underlying condition that can ah. cause hyperhidrosis. And typically, menopausal women would have night sweats. All right, guys, listen, uh, <laughs> I, I do want to find out what's happening with me. But right now, we do have to go for a break. Uh, but when we come back, we are going to learn more about other things <laughs> regarding sweat. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to my home. I told you I'm the perfect guy for this job. I'm already sweating, but come on in. I'll show you a little bit more. I am a big sweater. Typically on shoot, I'd be handed tissues, given a fan. It's a little bit annoying. When I'm just doing daily chores in the house and I'm already sweating like this, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit excessive, yeah. There are many situations I wish I didn't sweat as much as I do. Say, for example, I'm, I'm wearing a really nice suit at a friend's wedding, and I start to sweat through my, my shirt. So normally for me, it's my armpits and my, my chest area. The armpits aren't so bad unless you lift your, your arms up. But I get a lot on my chest area, um, and that's very obvious no matter what you're wearing. I have never heard about any procedure or seeing any specialist to kind of control my sweat or, di or diminish or decrease my sweat. So this is going to be really interesting. Hello. Hello, welcome to my clinic. Hi, yes. nice to see you again. Are you all ready for your um, botulinum toxin injection? I'm ready, but I don't exactly know what is happening. We're going to mark out all the areas that mm -hmm. you sweat a lot mm -hmm. and I'm going to do tiny little injections of botulinum toxin and then after that you'll see the results in about two weeks. I'm all yours. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. Yep. So this procedure is called botulinum toxin injections for hyperhidrosis. Hyperhidrosis means excessive sweating. In my patients, they can actually get up to 90% relief in hyperhidrosis. So we're injecting it superficially because the sweat glands are just beneath the skin surface. It blocks this thing called acetylcholine and acetylcholine triggers the sweat gland to produce sweat. So when we block that, then the sweat glands doesn't produce so much sweat. Are there any side effects? Are very minimal and they're usually very short term. So pinprick marks are possible, you get bruising very occasionally. Of course, with all injections, there's a chance of bacterial infection. Keep the area clean. If you do have them, we'll give a, a bit of an antibacterial cream. Can anyone come and do this? We don't do this treatment for people who are pregnant. 
or if your issue is not really hyperhidrosis. You can get the treatment, but you may find minimum impact. Right. Yeah. Now we're doing my chest. So I'm gonna put a little massager here. Sure. And most people find that it's a little bit more uncomfortable. That's it? Yes. Wow. It. Short and sweet and painless. So you said it takes about two weeks yes. for this to really kick in. Yeah. What should I be doing the next couple of days for yes. aftercare? Don't drink alcohol tonight if you don't want bruising. That yep. actually reduces the risk. Next two weeks, nothing you need to avoid. Just continue with normal activities. Okay. And then that'll be a good time for a review. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hi guys. Okay, it is two weeks post-procedure. And even though I'm still sweating, it has significantly decreased. So I have noticed that my armpits aren't really sweating as much or at all. And just my chest area, a little bit more, but only in the areas that weren't injected. So I've noticed there's a distinct difference between where I was injected with the Botox and the middle part here. So my sweat still comes out and it still pulls here, but it's less, significantly less. So the procedure does work and it's pretty cool. Excuse wow. The Excuse the pun. Oh. Pretty cool. Yeah. Very <laughs> That's, I like cool. it. Like Big it. difference. If you can see, you know, I wore the same shirt on purpose, yeah. right? Mm. To show yeah. from two yeah. weeks earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So before yeah. botulin, yeah. was there any other remedies? Yes. There are actually a lot of remedies out there. I usually um, get my patients to go on this thing called a therapeutic ladder. So if they come in and they are telling me they sweat a little bit. We try some lifestyle changes, like avoiding triggers, like your spicy food. Mm. Um, then usually I'll recommend them some topicals. So there are topicals um, that are antiperspirants. They contain uh, aluminum crystals. They can apply this on at night on dry skin. And you will use it every night. And over a few weeks, you'll find that your sweating reduces. But the problem is just that you have to do it every day. Mm. And sometimes people worry about skin irritation. Um, so it does take some time. I have to keep doing it, otherwise the effect wears off. Then if that doesn't work, then we will try other stuff. There are oral medication you can take, okay. but that's more for people with um, really like diffuse bad. sweating because yeah. there are side effects with medication. Sure. Uh, constipation, urinary retention, some nausea. Then finally for areas like Paul, which is, you know, like he said, he knows exactly where he's sweating. Mm -hmm. Botulinum toxin is a very good option because you don't have to do it every day. You can just have the injections and not worry about it. What about mm. if like someone wanted to remove their sweat glands completely yes. via surgery? Is yes. that, is that so, an option? You know, in old days, we, wow. there are um, surgery options. They actually would curetage the sweat glands. N not great because you can only do it on the underarms areas. You can't oh. really do it on the chest because right. of scarring. Yeah. Then they used to do sympathectomy, which is cutting off, um, disrupting your sympathetic nerves. And so you can't sweat. But the side effect of that is that you don't produce normal amount of sweat, you just don't sweat. What about what about the people who have the sweaty palms and it's really bad? You're right. Could yeah. they use it for that and then to sweat everywhere else? But but the problem is one of the side effects is the area that's treated, you, you get rebound sweating in the other areas. Mm -hmm. And you, you need to know that it's irreversible. Okay, oh. so I guess we've mm. talked about sweating too much. Now, yeah. <laughs> sweating too little, that's also a problem. So sweating too little, what we call anhydrosis, it can be, again, some underlying medical condition. Uh, people with thyroid issues, people who are taking certain medication. And of course, if you have any disruption to your sympathetic uh, glands, nerve fibers, for example, Horner's syndrome, it is associated with ptosis of the eyes, inability to sweat, that is also a syndrome. Usually, uh, it is part of a medical health condition because if you don't sweat, it actually causes a lot of issues with your body. Uh, if we go to a country that's cooler or cold, we you know we naturally sweat less. So how do we how do we sure that how do we be sure that it's not hip, hypnosis? What do, you, what do you call it again? Yeah, hydrosis. Hyper, hyper, yeah. Yeah. Hypnosis. Yeah. Hypnosis. <laughs> hydrosis. Yeah, hydrosis. Hydrosis. So in a colder country, yes, you would expect yourself to sweat less. But if you exercise in a cold country, Mm -hmm. you would expect everybody to sweat some amount. So if you don't, then, you know, it may be something to worry about. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. a slight misconception because mm. 
we're, we're always sweating, yeah. even mm. in winter and cold. Yes, every day. It's just, it's not as humid, yeah. so our sweat's evaporating quicker. Ah. Yes. We're actually still sweating. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. it's crazy. Everyone, everyone sweats in winter, so if you have that idea where, oh, because it's a winter, yeah, it's cold, cold. I don't we don't sweat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. You do need yeah. to That's shower. when all the body ah, odors so come exactly. out. Ah. <laughs> Look, we've been talking a lot about sweating and everything, uh, and sweat also sometimes can cause body odor. So we're going to talk about body odor when we come back and what we can do about it, or if we should do anything about it at all. I don't know. We'll talk okay. to the doctor. Stay with us. <laughs> Novena Velocity, and I just want to say a big thank you to Dr. Lo for joining me on this really hot day. I'm melting. Speaking of it being hot, I think a lot of people will have questions about sweating. So let's go and see what they have to ask. Okay, let's go. If I sweat a lot, uh, what's the best way to cool down? Well, there are actually several places that you can put a cool towel. Okay. So let me ask you, where would you put a cool towel usually? Would you put it on your face, your neck? Mm, or... Sorry, on my neck. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly the wrong way to cool down. Right. The best way to cool down is actually on your palms and your feet and the upper part of your cheeks. So if you're putting it on your neck and your head, because the thermostat thinks that it's a bit lower in temperature, your body will actually become hotter. See, that's you right. No. That. Yeah. yeah. I have sweaty palms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how can I actually... Stop it. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> well, you know, sweaty palms is actually very common. You can use over-the-counter products. Anything that contains aluminium. Aluminium are crystals that will plug up these sweat glands. You put them at night when your skin is cool and very dry. Then it will work the next day. And then because they plug up the sweat glands, and if you use it every day, you'll find that the sweating will decrease. I see. Yeah. When I buy antiperspirants, what should I look out for? Well, that's actually a very good question. Because a lot of people buy the wrong thing when they go to the drugstore. There is a difference between deodorant and antiperspirant, and a lot of oh. people mix up the two. What you actually need is an antiperspirant, not a deodorant. So you want to look for something that contains aluminum crystals. Essentially, there's two big classes, mm -hmm. uh, the aluminum chloride mm -hmm. and the zirco zirconium salt. Now, aluminum chloride tends to be more effective. They are okay. smaller molecules, so they can plug up the sweat glands more, okay. but more likely to cause a little bit of redness and rashes. Now, if you have sensitive skin, then go for the zirconium salt. Mm -hmm. Tends to be bigger molecules. They don't plug up the sweat glands as well. It's a bit more superficial. There you go. I hope that answers that your question. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Clearly, we went to the best place possible yeah. right, to get, you know, all these questions. It's the, the gym. gym. Yeah. When we talk about sweating, the next thing that comes to mind is body odor. Mm. Yeah. I use antiperspirant, yeah. and I used to use deodorant because, you know, my dad's like, oh, don't use the antiperspirant, you know, that blocks your pores, mm. blah, blah, blah. And there's... Has anybody ever heard of dying from too much antiperspirant? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, oh, what happened? To, oh, Mike, oh, poor Mike. Oh, yeah. Too much <laughs> too under much. deodorant yeah. you know, or antiperspirant. Is there any problem with antiperspirant? <laughs> Well, you know, I think there was um, some worry that uh, antiperspirants that contain aluminum crystals uh, can have harm on the body. But I think recent studies have uh, dis debunked that yeah. myth because yeah. um, there was actually a study where they put radioactive uh, aluminum and they track the amount of aluminum in your body yeah. after daily use. And it was less than the amount that we consume orally. So far, you know, there don't seem to be any long-term health risks. Oh. Yeah. For someone who sweats a lot, does that immediately mean that they are highly likely to have body odour? You know, body odour can vary so much amongst individuals. And actually, our eccrine sweat glands, the sweat they produce, don't have odour. But our other sweat glands, the apocrine, they oh. will produce a sweat that's a little bit milky in texture mm. because it has fat and protein inside. Mm. So bacteria love to feed on these fat and protein. Nice. And that's how you get the body odor. That's how you get the body odor. Mm. Okay. So if someone is struggling with body odor, what can they or do? Or how about if so, because you, you know, you just use deodorant. If someone <laughs> else is struggling with body odor, what can we do about it? <laughs> because <laughs> that's we're the ones that get affected. Right? We do. We are the ones 
Jordans uh, definitely get away with this. <laughs> yes. I mean, deodorants definitely is one way. What they do is they make um, the environment less acidic. So then you still sweat, but then you don't have so much bacteria feasting on your... That's what deodorant does. Yes, that's what it does. So people who wear deodorant, they find they have... Makes you less this, acidic. That's yeah, the interesting. Area. I just yeah. always thought deodorant masked uh, I thought it was just a, a, smell. a smell. I mean, they do have a smell, but, but they actually reduce the smell oh. that you produce, right? Oh. So okay. that's what deodorant does. To, okay. Yeah. And then the antiperspirants are the ones that plug up your sweat glands right. so you don't even sweat. But of course, as a result of sweating less, you will smell better because you don't yeah. have the moisture, right. which will then have less bacteria proliferation. Do some people still smell whether they use this or not? Some people will still smell even when they use um, either because they produce so much sweat and, you know, it can only last for a certain time. So yeah. mm. if you are sweaty the whole day, I think it will improve your smell, but it may not get rid of it completely. Is there a particular thing yeah. that we have to look out for on the labels when we're buying antiperspirants mm. or deodorants? Yes, uh, I think people usually confuse the two. And so when they sweat too much and they want to reduce sweating, they go and buy a deodorant and they wonder why they're still sweating. Mm -hmm. um, I think deodorants are the type of stuff you wear in the morning and they will be clearly labeled deodorants. And they usually come in a spray format, as you can see. And the antiperspirants are the ones that are more roll on because they are the ones that contain aluminum crystals. And you don't apply them in the morning before you go out, you apply them at night when you are cool and dry. Wait, ah, what? what? Yes, yes. So for antiperspirants, it's not something that you use and you'll stop sweating immediately. You, it's a, a treatment you have to use every night. So at night, when your skin is cool and dry, sometimes I tell my patients to use a hair dryer because when it's wet, the aluminum crystals are more likely to cause problems. It's not going to bind. Yeah, no, and it's going to irritate the skin when it scratches across the skin surface oh. when it's slightly moist. So then you apply that and let it sit, you go to sleep. Some of the prescription formulations ask you to wash off in the morning, some not, so you just follow the instructions. And the next day you may still sweat because you have to use that every day and it takes effect in about two to three weeks. Some children say they're antiperspirants, maybe they contain a very, very small, low concentration of aluminum crystals, right. but a pure antiperspirant is the one that you actually apply at night when your skin's cool because then you can actually plug up the sweat glands. Wow. And it takes a while to work. Go. You know, you must think of treating uh, your sweating like part of your skincare routine. Yeah. You would be using a deodorant in the morning and your antiperspirant at night. And it's something That's that bizarre. you just... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. One thing I did, I did a, I did a bad idea once. I was on a plane. <laughs> I was stinking. Yes. Okay. And I was like, Why? I, Why? Because I forgot, cool to put on, I, put, I forgot to wear deodorant. Yeah, he was I forgot yeah. to put it on. Yeah. You know, sometimes you forget. And so what I did was, I'm like, I need to do something. So they didn't have deodorant in the bathroom, but they had perfume. Okay. And I went that 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 Ow. that. Ah. It stung <laughs> so bad for like an hour. It was so painful. So don't ever do that. Yeah. Well, now that we know more about about sweating, we know more about body odor, we know more about uh, basically everything to do with uh, sweat and what it causes and how to treat it. Uh, I hope you guys uh, are well informed and now some people uh, along with myself will know that you have hyper, what is it? Hydrosis. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, we that. yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we want to thank you so much, Dr. Lowe. You've yeah. been a wealth of knowledge. On top of that, thank you to our guest, oh. Paul and Adai. Thank you so much for joining in. All right, guys. Fun. Thank we you will see you me. next time on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. Hey, did you like this episode? Well, if you did, don't forget to catch our online series, We Need to Talk About This, on MeWatch. More than 80% of the hair on your scalp are in the active growing phase. And it can be anything between two to even eight years. A growing phase, eight years? Yes, which is why you can have such long hair.